What's up, everybody? Booty Noodles here. I have been getting a whole lot of questions about how do you maintain mana with Frost Claw on my Spark Charge Artillery build, um, as well as questions about um, how do I generate so much ward. So I wanted to make this quick video to go over um, how you can stop running into problems with your mana cost on Frost Claw. Um, the core of it with the mana is this node here, Gift of Winter. Gift of Winter gives us a 36% chance to gain 12 mana on cast, which means on average, every single time we cast um, Frost Claw, we get four mana back. Now, with all of these extra nodes here, these three specifically that give us extra casts, every time I click or you know cast Frost Claw one time, you can see it casts a whole bunch of extra times. That's what each one of those extra bounces are. And so every time I cast Frostclaw, I, I believe it turns out to be six extra casts or a six total cast, which means if I average four mana back on every cast, I am getting on average 24 mana back every time I cast Frostclaw. And so as long as my Frostclaw mana cost is below 24, I can sit here and spam Frostclaw and I will pretty much never run out of mana because I'm always, on average, gaining more mana than I'm losing. Now, you could get very unlucky and somehow run out of mana, but that is super duper rare. Now, the next question is, well, how do I get all of that mana efficiency to reduce my mana cost to below 24? The answer is, first of all, this node, right? This node gives you minus 6 mana cost. This node here gives me minus 3 mana cost. And then this node over here can give you a whole lot of mana efficiency. And then when you add that on to items like a wand that gives you minus three spell mana cost, or a fire starter's torch or any other scepter that gives you um, the prefix that gives you increased spell damage and minus spell mana cost, or idols that have mana efficiency with frost claw. You should be able to, with all of those combined, reduce your mana cost enough to beat that 24 threshold. So I hope that's helpful. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the ward generation um, and how I'm generating so much ward. With the artillery spark charge, most of the ward is coming from the passive tree here. Um, you generate a lot of ward with this node on cast. You generate a whole lot of ward with this node on cast because Frostclaw is an area skill and you're going to be having three runes above your head. Um, and so ward per rune on area skill use, every time I cast Frostclaw, I'm getting 24 times three um, ward. So that's super strong node right here. Um, up here, um, you'll be specced into this. This node can give you a whole bunch of ward on crit. Um, additionally, it gives you extra crit multiplier against bosses and stuff, which is helpful. Um, and this node, this is really how you're getting all of your ward when you're fighting rares and bosses and whatnot. Um, because 28 ward on hit, and you are hitting a lot, generates an insane amount of ward. So this is very important in conjunction with this node that um, you know applies a brand that allows you to benefit from this node. Uh, when you're casting lightning skills. Finally, the last thing, um, well, the second to last thing is the Twisted Heart. Um, this is not necessary, um, but again, is, is definitely good for higher corruption. Um, this grants you ward. It converts your current health to ward on spell cast. You have very high cast speed, so you're doing this very fast. Um, but in order to make use of this, it's very important that you have Life Leech in your build somewhere, which you can get from either the Sorcerer or Passive Tree. Um, in my case, I'm doing Fire Damage, so Fire Life Leech. On the Artillery build, you're going to be doing uh, Lightning Damage, so you you know, you know take this instead. It gives you Lightning Penetration and Lightning Leech all in one node. It's very helpful. Alternatively, if you're running something else, you can get it from the Black Sun timeline as a Blessing um, uh, Spell Leech. Um, right here. And so that is how you solve your ward problems. Additionally, you need to be stacking ward retention. Um, you, each intelligence gives you 4% ward retention. Um, and so if you are doing a intelligence stacking build where you have, you know, 150 intelligence or something, you can be getting like 400 to 600% ward retention. And um, that means your ward is decaying a lot slower, which means you can build up more ward. It's all very important. 
I'd say the least important stat would be something like um, the ward threshold, like ward decay threshold. Essentially, you can just think of that as flat health. Um, and so, you know, my ward decay threshold is like about 514 right now. So it's like an extra 500 flat health. Um, and yeah, that is that is how you um, get the ward. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, tune in to my streams. Um, support the channel however you can. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm glad I can help you all out and I'll, I'll see you around.